previous session we looked at how to define partial differentiation and in this session we want to look at how we can use the rules of differentiation and apply them in partial differentiation problems all right so we will start off by looking at the first rule of differentiation where we were using the power rule together with the constant All right. So assuming we have a z function, which is basically explained by two independent variables, x and y, when we calculate the partial derivative, first of all, let's, talk note, let's take note of the different notations that we can use to show a partial derivative. So in this case, it's a partial derivative of z with respect to s, x, where you are using the rounded D, or you can route, write it as a fraction with uh, the rounded D as a function of both uh, the original X function, and this is showing that it's being differentiated with respect to X, or you can use an F with a subscript X, and all these three notations simply say the same thing, that you are finding the partial derivative of Z with respect to X. Right. In the same manner, from the z function, we can also find the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So looking at an example, let's say we have a z function given as 3x cubed y squared. So we can see that both x and y, in this case, the relationship between the two, they are multiplying each other together with the constant z3. Uh, right. So to find the partial derivative, we are going to use the power rule, right? So with the power rule, it simply tells us that when you differentiate with respect to x um, in a single variable situation, what you're going to do is you keep the constant, multiply it to the initial power on the x, and then multiply it with the x raised to the power of n minus 1. Now that we have got two variables explaining z, when you differentiate with respect to x, you're basically finding the partial uh, derivative of z with respect to x. It means that your y variable or your y um, variable in this case will also behave as a constant, right? So when you differentiate using the power rule, 3 and y squared will be your k, right? So that will be your constant. And you're going to multiply the constant with the power on the x, which is the 3, right? We are bringing down the 3. x raised now to the power of n minus 1. So it will be 3 minus 1. So now it will be raised to the power of x squared, right? So if you are to simplify the answer, we will multiply the constants. 3 times 3y squared will give us 9y squared multiply by your x squared, and that becomes your final answer. Same applies to finding the partial derivative of z with respect to y. In this instance, because we are differentiating with respect to y, it means your x is now a constant, right? So 3x cubed becomes your k, right? And you're going to multiply it by the power on your y, which is 2, times y raised to the power of n minus 1, 2 minus 1, which is 1. So your final answer will be 2 times 3x cubed, which is 6x cubed, multiplied by your y. You can also apply the same to linear rule, right? Linear rule basically allows us to add or subtract two functions. Right. So in this case, your z function, which is your dependent variable, is explained by two exogenous functions. Right. Of which each of the function is a function of x and y. Right. So for us now to calculate the partial derivative of z with respect to x, it means we are going to calculate the partial derivative of f with respect to x as well as the partial derivative of g 
with respect to x, right? So using these notations, which you have indicated earlier on, your f of x and your g of x, your f of y and your g of y, will be able to calculate the partial derivatives, right? So always remember that your f of x is basically the partial derivative of the f function with respect to x. A g of x is the partial derivative of the g function with respect to x. And then your fy is the f function, partial derivative of the f function with respect to y. And your gy is the partial derivative of the g function with respect to y, right? So as an example, you have your z function, which is 3x squared plus xy plus y plus 4y squared. So when you're finding the partial derivative of z with respect to x or with respect to y, we are still going to use the power rule right for the individual elements in that function right so power rule on 3x squared power rule on xy and power rule on 4y squared right so solving for the partial derivative your partial derivative of z with respect to x right using power rule on 3x squared it means that the constant in this regard is 3 right and then we differentiate x squared it becomes 2x and then when you move on to the next um, element, your xy, the constant in xy when you are differentiating with respect to x is your y, right? And then we find the derivative of um, x, right? In this case, it's going to be 1. And then when we move on to the next one, when you are differentiating with respect to x, it means the constant in this regard is 4y squared, right? And then when you find the derivative of a constant, it's equal to zero. That's why we end up with zero in this regard. Then expanding and removing the brackets on this one, we'll solve our answer to be 6x plus y. Finding the partial derivative of z with respect to y. For the first element, 3x squared, 3x squared is a constant, right? Because we are differentiating with respect to y. And then when you differentiate a constant with respect to y, it means the answer is 0. Then moving to the second element, in this regard, we are differentiating with respect to y, so x is our constant. And then when you differentiate um, the y, the answer becomes 1. Moving to the next element, 4y squared, constant in this regard is 4. And then when we differentiate y squared with respect to y, the answer is 2y. Removing the brackets and solving, it means the partial derivative of z with respect to y is x plus 8y. Moving on to the product rule. So with the product rule, now we have got two functions, right, that are multiplying, right? So z, it's a function of two functions that are multiplying. Right. So in this regard, we have to use the product rule. All right. So what the product rule basically uh, tells us is that when we go back to the original product rule that we have learned um, when we're working with a single variable, we were saying that your dz dx, which is a total derivative with respect to x, will be one of the functions, your f of x, multiplied by the first derivative of the second function, plus the original second function multiplied by the first derivative of the first function. So we are using the same concept, but now allowing for partial derivatives, right? So as you can see, what we are saying is you have your partial derivative with respect to z as the partial derivative of the x function with respect to x multiplied by the original g function plus the partial derivative of the g function with respect to x multiplied by the original f function. So same applies when you are calculating the partial derivative of z with respect to y. You take the partial derivative of the f function with respect to y multiplied by the original g function plus the partial derivative of the g function with respect to y multiplied by the original f function. So we can see it here in an example.
You can also take note of the meaning of your F subscript X, your G subscript X, or your F subscript Y, your G subscript Y. In a different notation, it's given there. All right, so moving to the example, we're saying we have your Z function given as X plus 4 multiplied by 3X plus 2Y. So in this example, we can clearly identify the two functions, right? So the two functions that we're identifying here is that your F, your function F is the first bracket, which is X plus 4, right? And then your function G is the second bracket, which is with 3X plus 2Y, right? Then from your F function, we can calculate the partial derivative of F with respect to X, right? So it means we are only allowing for X to change holding your Y constant, right? So in this case, the answer is 1. And when you take also the partial derivative of your F function with respect to Y, it means all elements are in this function are behaving like constants because we don't have a Y variable in this. So your partial derivative will be equal to 0. And then in your, with your G function, when you differentiate it with respect to X, taking a partial derivative of G with respect to X, the answer is going to be 3. Because in the second element, we don't have X and everything is behaving like a constant. And then when you also look at the partial derivative of G with respect to Y, it means the first element is a constant. In the second element, we differentiate that with respect to Y, we get 2. Right? So for the final solution, we have to combine the four elements. Right? So partial derivative of Z with respect to X will be equal to the partial derivative of F with respect to X plus the original, multiplied by the original G function, plus the partial derivative of G with respect to X, multiplied by the original F function. And then if you remove the brackets and expand that, your answer comes out is 2 multiplied by 3X plus Y plus 6.